Let's read about the delusion of the lawless. But the day of Yah shall come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with intense heat and the earth and the works that are in it shall be burned up. There's a fire coming, folks. That's why we have to be serious about the truth. There's a fire coming. That's why we, we have to be earnest in our witness to our families and our friends because there's a fire coming. There's a fire judgment coming. Verse 11, seeing all these are to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be in set-apart behavior? How do you know what set-apart behavior is? The only way you can know what set-apart behavior is, is if you read and love and follow Torah. That's how you know what set-apart behavior is. What kind of people ought you to be in set-apart behavior and reverence? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of Elohim, through which the heavens shall be destroyed, being set on fire. And the elements melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we wait for a renewed heavens and a renewed earth in which righteousness dwells. In other words, obedience dwells in this new heavens and new earth. So then, beloved ones, looking forward to this, do your utmost to be found by him in peace. Notice spotless and blameless. How do you know what spotless and blameless are? You have to know Torah. You have to be obedient. And reckon the patience of our master as deliverance. In other words, he's given people time to repent. As also our beloved Shaul, this is Paul, wrote to you according to to the wisdom given to him, as also in all his letters, speaking in them concerning these matters. So he also wrote about these matters in which some are hard to understand, difficult to understand, which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction. As they do also the other scriptures. You then, beloved ones, being forewarned. So the scripture forewarns us. This message tonight is forewarning us. Watch lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. Being led away. Didn't we already read the verse that said the falling away must come first? So we must be careful that we do not fall from our own steadfastness. In other words, that we are not influenced by the mystery of lawlessness. And oftentimes, this mystery of lawlessness creates what it desires in a person because that person has submitted himself to modern culture. We have not been called to be shaped by modern culture. We've been called to shape modern culture. And many of us can listen to a message like this and say, well, this doesn't really relate to me. I'm already fallen to raw. But I'm telling you that every day we come into contact with modern culture. And modern culture is controlled by the mystery of lawlessness. And you have a decision in that moment whether you're going to submit yourself to the mystery of lawlessness and go along with modern culture or whether you're going to rise up and say, no, I'm going to follow Torah. I'm going to follow Yeshua and I'm going to walk in the ways of Yah. We're talking about returning to the ancient past. That's what this RV outreach tour is all about, to encourage people to get back to the ancient paths. And so each one of us need to be willing to judge ourselves, to look into our own lives and see where it is that we have stumbled 
where we have allowed modern culture to shape us, to shape our thoughts, to shape our words, to shape our actions. Because when we do that, we are coming under the sway of the mystery of lawlessness. And by doing that, we are participating in preparing the environment in which anti-Mashiach will rise. We do not want to fall from our own steadfastness. We do not want to be led away into lawlessness. Hallelujah. You then, beloved ones, being forewarned, watch lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. Being led away, that's the falling away. Notice, with the delusion of the lawless. The lawless are under a delusion. But that delusion has the power to impact even those of us who are walking in Torah. If we become apathetic. Yah has called us to swim upstream. I've noticed in Montana and in Wyoming, the rivers flow pretty quickly around here. All you have to do is take your feet off of the bottom and before long, you're way on down. That's the mystery of lawlessness. If you're not careful. You can also be led away. With the delusion of the lawless. Notice it says, but grow in the favor and knowledge of our master and savior, Yeshua Messiah. That word favor in my translation that I'm using here, the ISR, is grace in many other translations. So we're talking about being obedient, obeying the commands, and then in the same breath, we see Shimon Kepha charging us to grow in the grace. Well, you know, grace is that Yah does it all and you don't do anything. And if you do anything, then you've fallen from grace and now you're just a law keeper. Well, you know what we say? If you're not a law keeper, what are you? A law breaker. We see right here a charge, but grow in the favor or the grace and knowledge of our Master and Savior, Yeshua Messiah. Noah, Noah found favor, found grace in the eyes of Elohim. But Elohim told him to build an ark. Let me ask you, what saved him? Was it just the grace or was it his obedience? He could have walked around saying, oh, I found grace in the eyes of Yah. Isn't that wonderful? And ignored the law of Yah or the command of Yah. And when the rain began to fall, he would have had the same perilous outcome as all the rest. And so grace or favor allows that conversation with Yah, then we hear and He speaks and He tells us what we're to do. And when we obey them, those commands, then we are saved. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 24. We'll pick up with verse 10. And I want to show you something interesting. This talks about in the last days, there's going to be an increase in lawlessness. In other words, the mystery of lawlessness is going to have its effect. Yeshua said, and then many shall stumble. What is he talking about there when many stumble? He's talking about the falling away that must come first. And they shall deliver up one another. Within the context of religion, there are going to be people who say they believe in Jesus who are going to be willing to deliver you up. We have to be prepared for that. 
It says that they shall deliver up one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise up and lead, notice, many astray. That's the falling away. And because of the increase in lawlessness. So the mystery of lawlessness is going to take effect. People are going to be deceived by this dynamic, this force of darkness. And as we've already mentioned, Hasatan does not deceive you into righteousness or obedience. You will be deceived into lawlessness. There will be an increase in lawlessness. Not just in the world. The world is already lawless. But I'm talking about in institutionalized religion. There will be an increase in lawlessness. Notice it says, because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many shall become cold. How does Yah spell love? Obedience. Yeshua said it, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if there's an increase in lawlessness, then the love of many, the love for Elohim, shall become cold, it says. People are not going to love Elohim. They're going to love the lust of the flesh. They're going to love their religious traditions. They're going to love their ways of unrighteousness. And they're going to fall away. And Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse 13, Enter in through the narrow gate, because the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter in through it. You ever notice in most large cities, that street where the bars are, and the houses of ill repute, where people go down to sin, they name that street Broadway. Where did they get it? Right out of the Bible. That's the street people go down to sin on. And they named it Broadway. Why? Because broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter in through it. I have a message called Beware of the Many. If everybody's doing it, you shouldn't be. The many is a sign. Do not follow the many. Verse 14 says, Because the gate is narrow, and the way is hard-pressed, which leads to life. And there are few who find it. I am going to proclaim the good news of Yeshua Messiah and Teshuvah, and his lifestyle of Torah in obedience to the heavenly calling in every state in this United States and across Canada. And we are going to produce videos every week and send them around the world. And we are going to do it even though we're following in the narrow way and it's difficult and hard-pressed. We are going to do it. And we don't care about having large crowds, although we want the masses to hear the message. I tell you, I'll preach to 10 or to 10,000. I'll proclaim this good news. I heard somebody say earlier today, I've been involved in walking in Torah for a number of years, and this is the very first outreach that I've ever been a part of amongst people who walk in Torah. I would say it won't be the last. Because there is the mystery of lawlessness that's ramping up, but there's also the spirit of Yah moving in the hearts of people. And people are willing to come out of their day-to-day -day jobs and travel this country to give this country a witness because... This country needs a witness. If this country doesn't perform teshiva, this country will be destroyed. Look at Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 21. Yeshua said, Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, 
shall enter into the reign of the heavens. But he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. How do you know the desire of the Father? By reading the Torah. And so you must be doing the desire of the Father. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? Mighty works is implying miracles. And so this is a group of people who are obviously in ministry and they are prophesying and they are casting out demons and they are doing mighty works in Yeshua's name. And many of us would say, well, these things are evidences of their righteousness. And yet Yeshua said, it's not. These are not evidences of righteousness. It's whether they're obeying the will of the Father. You can be in ministry and be completely influenced by the mystery of lawlessness. And there are many who are. And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. You only know somebody when they walk with you. Yeshua said, follow me. Walk in my ways. Take up my example. Walk in obedience and righteousness. You may be in ministry, but I didn't know you. You didn't walk in my ways. You walked in the ways of mixed up religion. Depart from me, you who work what? Lawlessness. So we see right here that the mystery of lawlessness worked its way in to ministry. And the mystery of lawlessness can deceive people who are prophesying, casting out demons, and doing mighty works. And if that is true, and it is, then we all must be very careful not to be persuaded. Firstly, by modern culture, because modern culture is rooted in the mystery of lawlessness. If you look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, think like the world, watch what the world produces on television, listen to what the world produces on television, your stereo or your iPod or all of those eyes. You have to realize you're being influenced. I have to obey what I hear the Father tell me, but I'm going to give you an example. I turned my television off and got rid of it years ago. And I don't sit and watch television for hours on end like a lot of people do. That was a direct charge from the Father. We need to dial into His frequency and get off the frequency of the mystery of lawlessness. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Do you think you could be right in the middle of a community of Torah and hear him say, depart from me, you who work lawlessness? I would say it's possible. <laughs> Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, what does Deuteronomy 18, 18 and 19 say? The Yah is going to raise up a prophet like Moshe out of the midst of the brothers. He's going to put his words in that prophet's mouth and that prophet's going to speak to the people all that Yah commands him. And it shall be that the man who does not listen to Yah's word, which he speaks in Yah's name, Yah will require it of him. That prophet was and is Yeshua. When Yeshua says these words of mine, Yeshua said, I didn't come to speak my own words. I came to speak the words of my father, the one who sent me. I didn't come to do my own words. Will, I came to do the will of the Father. I didn't come to do my own work. I came to do the work of the Father. Yeshua was the perfect representation of the Father on the earth. He had the power of attorney. 
He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. If I was to give you power of attorney, you could go into my bank and you could say, I want all of the money that's in G. Stephen Simons' bank account. They might look across the counter at you and say, you don't look like G. Stephen Simons. And you could hold up that piece of paper and say, when you've seen me, you've seen G. Stephen Simons. And then you have authority to take the money. Yeshua acted in that authority. So when he spoke, he spoke the words of the Father. He was the ultimate teacher of Torah. Don't let anybody lie to you. He filled up the commandments. He exalted them. He took the commandments from the action of the hand to the attitude of the heart. And that's not lowering the standard. That's not abolishing the standard. That's raising the standard. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, he's speaking the words of the Father, he's speaking Torah, he's teaching Torah, and does them shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain came down and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, the rock of the set-apart written word of Yah. The rock of the Torah. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them shall be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain came down and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. Great fall. The falling away will come first. When people will not do Torah, when people are influenced by modern culture rooted in the mystery of lawlessness, and because they're disobedient, they will fall away, and great will be their fall. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 says, but the Spirit distinctly says that in latter times, we're living in latter times, some shall fall away. There it is again. Fall away from the belief. Again, you can't fall from something that you've never attained to. These are people who have some level of belief, but they're going to fall away. Why? Because they're paying attention to misleading spirits. It's important who you listen to. If you're listening to misleading spirits, you're going to be misled, obviously. And teachings of demons. I already mentioned one of the most popular doctrines in Christianity today is the doctrine of perverted grace. That says, you don't do anything. He does it all. And if you want to obey the Bible then you've fallen from grace and now you're a law keeper as if obeying the Bible is negative, is a bad thing. Can you see that they are under a delusion when obeying the Bible becomes a bad thing, a negative thing, an evil thing? They're under a delusion. And it's the most popular doctrine in Christianity. I know. I know people who are promoting it. I know people who have promoted it all over the world. And it's because they've been listening to misleading spirits and teachings of demons. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Notice what it says. And we know that the Torah is good if one uses it legitimately. The Torah is good. Now, why is it important to say the Torah is good? Because in the day we're living in, and really all throughout the time of Christianity, 
the Torah has been considered something that is irrelevant, something that we should abolish, we shouldn't pay attention to. And yet we see right here that Shaul is saying the Torah is good. Well, he says in Romans chapter 7 and verse 12 the same thing. He says, so that the Torah truly is set apart. The Torah is set apart. Your Bible may say holy. Well, if the Torah is holy, and without holiness no one will see Yah, then what does that mean? To be set apart, we need to follow Torah. So that the Torah truly is set apart, and the command set apart, notice, and righteous and good. Now, isn't it just like the mystery of lawlessness that religion would promote and proclaim and declare that the very thing that is set apart, righteous and good, should be abolished? Is that not the mystery of lawlessness? Look, if we go around abolishing everything that's set apart, righteous and good, what do we have left? We have left the environment into which the anti-Mashiach will rise, an environment of lawlessness. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9 says this, Knowing this, that Torah is not laid down for a righteous being. In other words, Torah is going to correct the lawless. Torah is going to correct the lawless. It's laid down to correct those who are lawless. Notice it says, but for the lawless and unruly, for the wicked and for sinners, for the wrongdoers and profane, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for those who whore, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and for whatever else that is contrary to sound teaching. The Torah is to correct the lawless. So the question is, do we no longer need Torah? In these days we're living in? Is the world becoming more and more righteous? Or is it becoming more and more lawless, more and more wicked, more and more unrighteous? So we need the Torah now more than ever. And then look what Shaul wrote in Romans chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Therefore, O man, you are without excuse, everyone who judges... For in which you judge another, you condemn yourself, since you who judge practice the same wrong. So if you're a judge and you're condemning others, but you're doing the same, then you're condemning yourself. And we know that the judgment of Elohim is according to truth, according to Torah, because Torah is truth, against those who practice such wrongs. And do you think, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such wrongs and doing the same, that you shall escape the judgment of Elohim? Or do you despise the riches of His kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of Elohim leads you to repentance? He's giving you time to repent. Verse 5, But according to your hardness and your unrepentant Heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim who shall render to each one according to his works. The standard for judgment is not what you say you believe. Yeshua never said, ask the tree what it believes. He said, look at its fruit. You can know what the tree believes by the fruit that it produces. I don't have to listen to you tell me what a great believer you are. I can watch your life and know whether you believe or not. And this is Shaul. Many people say, Shaul says that all you have to do is have a mental acknowledgement that Jesus is the Christ and then you're saved. Is that true? 
He says right here, who shall render to each one according to his works. In other words, whether that person has been obedient or disobedient. Notice it says, everlasting life to those who by persistence in good work. Notice it says good work. That's obedience to Torah. Seek for esteem and respect and incorruptibility, but wrath and displeasure to those who are self-seeking. I just love my made-up religion. I love my traditions. I want it my way. I'm self-seeking. And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. In other words, they're persuaded and influenced by the mystery of lawlessness. Affliction and distress on every human being working what is evil, doing what is evil. Of the Yehudi first, and also of the Greek. Verse 10, but esteem, respect, and peace to everyone working. Notice it's working. What is good? That's obedience to Torah. To the Yehudi first, and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with Elohim, for as many as sinned without Torah shall also perish without Torah. In other words, if you don't have Torah, but you transgress the Torah, that's what sin means, then you're going to perish without Torah. And as many as sinned, as transgressed the Torah, in the Torah, you had Torah, you were taught Torah, shall be judged by the Torah. So what is the standard for judgment? Torah. And Shaul is making that clear here. For not the hearers of the Torah are righteous in the sight of Elohim, but the doers of the Torah shall be declared right. We don't hear very many Christian preachers preaching that verse. Look at Titus chapter 2. We'll start with verse 11. It says, for the saving gift of Elohim has appeared to all men, instructing us to renounce wickedness. If you don't want to be influenced by the mystery of lawlessness, you need to be quick to repent. You need to renounce wickedness and worldly lusts and to live sensibly, righteously, and reverently in the present age, looking for the blessed expectation and esteemed appearance of the great Elohim and our Savior, Yeshua Messiah. Notice, who gave himself for us to redeem us from what? All lawlessness. We've been redeemed from lawlessness, not to lawlessness. He didn't obey it so we don't have to. He didn't obey it to create an environment of lawlessness that we can then operate in. We have been redeemed from all lawlessness, which means we've been redeemed to righteousness. We've been redeemed to obedience. And to cleanse for himself a people, his own possession. Notice, ardent for good works. Who gets to define good works? Do you get to define good works? Nope. Do I? Nope. What defines good works? Torah. And we should be ardent for Torah. Otherwise, we can fall into the delusion of the lawless. So here's the final warning in Scripture for all of us tonight and for those who are watching by video. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. Because they did not have a love of the truth. And what is truth? Torah. For this reason, Elohim sends them a working of delusion 
See, they're already under a delusion from Hasatan. But because they didn't love the truth, because they loved their unrighteousness, because they loved their disobedience, because they loved their mixed up religion and their religious traditions, then Elohim is ultimately going to give them over yes, to the delusion that they're under. And it's going to be a working of delusion sent by Elohim. Notice it says, for them to believe the falsehood. See, at that point, they cannot escape their delusion. If they reject the truth long enough, there will come a time when Elohim turns them over to their delusion, to believe the falsehood. Notice, in order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth, but have delighted in the unrighteousness. And so this message tonight is to encourage you that when you're accused of being deceived by Hasatan, Hasatan does not deceive people into obedience. The mystery of lawlessness does not deceive you into obedience, but into disobedience. The example of Yeshua is a perfect example of obedience. Yeshua said, I'm never left alone. The Father's always with me. Why, Yeshua? Because I always do what pleases Him. And so don't be discouraged when they accuse you of being deceived because it's not the enemy deceiving you into obedience. The deception is upon those who say there is no law of Elohim. Who love their religion the way it is. Declaring that the law of Elohim has been abolished. If you do anything, you've fallen from grace. And now you're just a law keeper as if obedience is an evil thing. You see how twisted and how perverted that is? And if we are not careful and constantly looking at ourselves and seeing where we are being influenced by modern culture, apathetic and lethargic and not standing up against modern culture, then we also will be swept away in the delusion of the lawless. And so this message tonight is to bring clarity so that you might understand the mystery of lawlessness, that dynamic that is at work today, deceiving people into disobedience and unrighteousness and lawlessness. But we here tonight declare we will not be deceived. Hallelujah. And we will not fall in to the delusion of the lawless. Hallelujah.